Hi, this is John in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm up in Santa Rosa for this uh, chemtrail event here with uh, Deborah Tavares and Jamie Lee. It's great, great stuff. A lot of turnout here, which is really good, but they are spraying the living dog piss out of us. You know, but at least people are talking here. Look at the turnout. Hey, it's Sunday, June 3rd, 2018. We're here at the Redwood Cafe in Katati, California, which is very near Santa Rosa. I'm John Knox, and I just want to show you, and we're, we're going to walk through the crowd. It's going to be kind of noisy, hard to hear, but these are the activists that showed up for this event. Jamie Lee, Deborah Tavares, Patrick Roddy, and some other people that are just phenomenally committed who made long drives just to get here. Come on, let's walk through. Just take a look at the amount of activists that showed up today. And another thing is... Oh, Patrick. Marshall Hoist, who drove up here from Huntington Beach today, this morning. This is Kim. I love his shirt. Hey, John. See? That's See the shirt? Kind of looks like mine, right? Yeah. Oh, look at that twist. The easiest thing for an activist to do is wear a T-shirt. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to think anything. Just walk around with a T-shirt. Now, here's some more folks over here. All right. There's Shakosh, a very, very strong local activist. Over here is Peter Valentino, the independent uh, write-in candidate for governor. And Rob Rubin, his campaign manager, who's back at the head we see. Yes. Hey, Rob. I just want to let you know we're on video. Yeah, we'll be doing a few of these, don't worry. Serena. Serena. She's an amazing activist on Facebook. Thank you. Take a look around to the, this side here. These are some of the signs that the activists brought today. This covers so many different activities and categories. Yes. No matter whether it's the, the fires right here in Santa Rosa, the DEW caused fires. Nothing decimates an area equally like something that's electromagnetic, something that's designed, something that's a system. Forest fires don't do that. Folks, yep. we're going to get started over here. That's we're Jamie Lee, the, song. the guy that you hear Anybody right now. Anybody that wants to come this way that can hear better, please come. One of the big reasons why this whole project is happening. Thank this you. is a song yeah. called Tuning. <laughs> oh, and the camera man's getting mobbed. My home roots, Los Angeles Skywash. This is Deborah Tavares, who's trying to yes. figure out what to do with this. <laughs> All right. So the Los Angeles Skywatch group is one of the reasons why I'm here, among many other reasons. But that's our that's our shout out to Skywatch. And all the way up that way, well, these are all activists that showed up today to do this kind of work. Okay. It is it is Sunday. Can we get your attention, everybody, please. Everybody, please. Pete, Pete please. Magdalena Woods, John Knox, nice to meet you. Can you wrap up what you're talking about? Yeah. So we're some music gonna finish this gonna video. There's like a big project coming up that you're gonna hear about later on today. Really, it's very, very important. Time for you to play. I'm John Knox, June 3rd. 2018. Okay, you Cultivate can your common sense, listen to some good music, and Thank stay you, curious. John Knox, for organizing. We wouldn't be here today. The most important thing about this meeting is these are all committed activists. Every person that has made the, the effort to show up here. I came from Tucson by way of Los Angeles, a lot of drama. But there's people here that went through a lot more than I did. There's Jamie Lee over there. He's doing interviews with some of the people. Right? Now, for what we're doing here, the amount of people that have shown up is way more than we expected. Because we've got a brand new project that we're going to be talking about very soon. But right now, let's go down this way. Here's Rob, campaign manager. Rob Rubin. Yeah. Rob Rubin. Amazing guy, really. 
<laughs> and I, I'm not going to be able to tell you who all who all is here. I just want to show you that the amount of people that showed up. There's Patrick Roddy. There's Peter Valentino, the, Peter Valentino. the independent write-in candidate for California governor. You can see the activist signs all along the side area here, handling all kinds of different uh, categories of activism. We have two supportive women right here, and I mean this sincerely. I don't use that word lightly. Gal and Marcia. Here we are. These two women are formidable. They're a force to be reckoned with. And this guy, John Knox, too. He's awesome, you know, and he's a force. And the yeah. one holding the camera, John Graff. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so excited to be here with all these people. Oh, yeah, Look yeah. at all of these great people that we have Marcia, met in person, and now we have. It's just know, fantastic to be here. Right. There's a plane yeah. spraying a big chemtrail right above our heads yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Why don't you go up to that? And here we are. We're the people that are going to what you see over here is the reason why a lot of us are here. This is the end of the road to Santa Rosa and also <laughs> Jamie Lee right here. Dirt this bag. guy is one of, the, one of the greatest activists and experts that I know. Now, I want to say something. We would not be here if it wasn't for John and John. This never would have happened all this group without your activism. So thank you, sir, for putting this all together. Thank you for helping me along. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. The plain truth and thank you all for coming. I have to lean against something because I am also attacked. Um, I fall backwards. Lou fall backwards. Uh, Sarah, where's Sarah B? Sarah's here. She's been attacked. Her car was driven off the road like Deborah's was a couple weeks ago. Um, there's another gentleman here. I forget his name who came up who started, said he's a targeted individual as well. Um, other people. But what we're about today and what I wanted to create from this beginning, new beginnings, is this dawn of understanding. And this dawn of understanding is an umbrella that encompasses all of us. It's a unifying force that doesn't eliminate anybody except the corporations, that those that don't wish the betterment of all. So the dawn of understanding is this umbrella that brings us all together. So we're going to coordinate the websites. We're going to coordinate the Facebooks. We're going to coordinate the Twitter feeds. We got these kids. Where's Eddie? You know, there's Eddie here. Eddie, how old are you? 22. Eddie says, I've been watching your videos, man, and I love you. I had to come here and support you. We need the millennials. We need the youth here. We need to reach out to the kids because the kids don't look up and see any future. You know why? Because there isn't one. Because we haven't created it yet. Right. We haven't created the future we want to see. So Bucky Fuller had a saying, and I'm going to paraphrase, don't worry about the existing paradigm. Create the new reality of a much better way that you want to see and make it happen. People will come to you. And that's what we're about today. So the idea being is that with my 100,000 subs, with Deborah's 50,000 subs, with Paul McGavin, with all these others, Peter Valentino, we all got, John Knox, we all got people viewing us now. Doug McKenzie at the ship drove down here from, from Mendocino and stuff. He's got a great interview and they've been, sub, they've been subversing him on his YouTube. He used to get five, ten thousand 10,000 views, now they're only showing 1,000, but he's doing great interviews. I think he did Mr. Valentino on an interview as well. So. What we have here is a collection of the willing, a coalition of the willing, I call it the Cow Club, and all of us can come together under a unified platform. Dawnforus.com is the website we're starting out, and we may change it, but just a beta site. And what it will list is many different things. It'll be an all in one place. So how many people go and look at 10 or 20 websites in the morning to figure out what's going on in the world? All of us. So why do we have one website that has best of Deborah, best of Jamie, best of Doug, best of everybody, best of John, where you can go to one place? Why don't we have a chat room where we can have all these conversations together so we're not feeling alone? What if we have this freedom of speech online petition that you sign on to? And what this freedom of speech online says is, take my information, share it with everybody you know. This is open source. This is a public forum. Who is not for public internet? Well, they're taking us down, folks. Yeah, they so are. So we're going to create our own freedom of speech platform. We're going to be the central governing agency, right, that we're governing, but they're going to be the one, we're going to be the ones that are going to vet who you can trust. I call it the web of trust, who you can trust, and who you want to look at that you know without having to vet, without who saying is a shield, who's a troll, who's a disinfo agent. Well, Deborah's proof she's not. I kind of think I proved I'm not. Because we've been putting it out there. Well, now guess what? We're calling all of you out. 
We're going to help you start websites. We're going to help you start Facebooks. We're going to help you start Twitters. And you're going to put out your own stuff because we need numbers. And then you're going to download all our stuff onto your sites, onto other platforms. We're going to take all our work and we're going to put it on SteelMint. We're going to put it on DShoot. We're going to put it on BitShoot or DTube. We're going to put it on BitShoot. And, and where's John? There's a couple other sites as well. Excellent. And so we're going to spread this thing out. We're going to make it many, 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 many places that they're going to have to shut down. And they're not going to be able to shut us down. Why? Because we're going to then, after we get our shit together, we're going to reach out to Dr. Marcola. We're going to reach out to Dr. Deagle. We're going to reach out to these health practitioners. We're going to have a health store. What health store do you go to to get immune deficiency, uh, helping with immune deficiency, with Wi-Fi protection? Where do you go? There's no place to go. Well, Deborah's done all the work because she's been at MK MKUltra for two years. So she's had crystal people come in. She did a wonderful symposium a, a couple months ago where it was health and activism. So what I want to propose is health, activism, and wisdom. And so we have a repository for all the library of information we've gathered where you can look up under geoengineering. You can look up under vaccines. You can look up under nanofoods, not GMOs. And now we got CRISPR technology, not GMOs. That's 25 years ago technology. I work for the company that brought the company that brought the first biotechnology company public with flavor saver technology called Calgy. They were bought by Monsanto, who also bought the Epicyte company that makes spermicide. And it's in every corn product you eat. Tortilla chips, and you wonder why fertility rates are going down? There's your answer. That was 2001. But this is not the problem. The problem is us not creating new visions of much better ways. The problem is we're not coming together to organize around many, many different platforms. What can we make better? The answer is everything. There's nothing that can't be made better today. And so we're going to call everybody out to do this. And we're going to have a central site that's going to be doing this, but it's going to be under this platform. And this dawn is the feminine divine. The word dawn is a feminine principle. This is the male masculine world we live in of testosterone war. It's Aries, it's Mars, it's killing. Does anybody know, besides Deborah, because I told her, why if this is so for 5,000 years? Why is we have a killing principle as, as far as our, our, our humanity? Why do we have to kill? The female is killed. Why? The feminine is killed because it's life giving. Well, no, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. And it's the Jesuits, folks. If you want to know Fordham School, Trump went to Jesuit School. Where did Clinton go? Jesuit School. The other thing is, it's, it's yeah. we don't want to talk about the college. Because we have a soul. Exactly. We're more powerful than all the ETs put together. Right, so they're so afraid of us, right, that they have to keep us in the dark by mass deception of 500 years and so. Okay? The mass deception keeps us in the dark. We're fucking mushrooms. We're kept in the dark and we're shit upon. That's what they think of it. They call us human resources for a reason. We're cold. Human resources for a reason. They call us chattel in legalese. Goyim. Goyim. We're called chattel. But it's not the Jews. That's the bite. That's the sidebar that they want you to go towards. It's the Jesuits. It's the men in black. That's what the movie was about. V for Vendetta. That was about the Jesuits. They're in every orifice in every community you can imagine. They've been doing it for 500 years. The reason they are dominating, the reason they say they have to create the feminine divine, and anybody that knows about ISIS knows that Persephone on top of the Washington, D.C. Capitol building, which used to be called Rome, Maryland, is ISIS. They're going to destroy Washington, D.C. How do we know this? What are the two states on each side of Washington, D.C.? Mary and The Virgin Mary. Who can tell me the date that doesn't already hurt for me, the date that Washington, D.C. was founded? Nobody knows this. February 23rd, 1871, the Organic Act, they created the Corpsoration USA. Your driver's license, your social security card, your birth certificate, which is used as collateral against the debt from 1933 that was never satisfied. So the more debt they run up, the more we are collateralized against the debt as going. That's right. Okay? So we've never gotten out of this debt. So that is why all your things are in capital letters, your driver's license, because you're in this fictitious straw man. Deborah in 2011, which turned me on to Deborah, was written by Northern California. It's going to be burned up. She wrote this in 2011. And guess what happened? It did. All right? So what do we have here today? We've got integrity. We've got a web of trust. 
and we've got conviction to make changes that have to be changed. There's Paul McGavin right there. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So Paul's the scientist who wired trust. Paul, Paul has been all over 5G. He's from Petaluma. He's got his children here. He is so well versed on all the problems and, 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 and the genocide, Deborah, we got to use that word, yep. the genocide of us that's using. So hopefully Paul can speak after, after Peter as well. You and me, that what we're doing here is just all about conspiracy. But we know it's not because the conspiracy is real, so up in the sky then it go again. Them. They're free, so okay. I'll try okay. them out. Whoa, this is okay. There's a nice Thank you, Madeline. So, um, I'm Deborah Tavares, and I run the website. Okay, I'll start over. I'm Deborah Tavares, and my husband and I have worked together for many, many years. We run the website Can everyone hear me well enough? I'll try to really get it out there. Um, I usually do. Um, what I want to talk about right now are a number of things, and not necessarily in any order. People will ask me, Deborah, what do you see as the most urgent thing? There are many urgent uh, crises that we face and opportunities to help others recognize. So I need to talk up. So I'm going to talk up. I, I'm going to talk up as best I can. So if, if uh, yeah, if people wouldn't walk on the on this, that would help too. Do you want um, me to get you a small PA and I can bring it back to you? Would that be helpful? Where is it? It's in my home. I could probably Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. That's okay. These, it's going to get hotter by the minute. All right. So, um, and then I've got some information. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, um, I was hit pretty badly for two and a half years back in mid-2015 when I had the Rinse Radio Show uh, five days a week. Uh, that was during the time when uh, Jeff Rentz uh, was, there was an attempted suicide on his life, and uh, I co-hosted with him during his recovery because he had some head injury. And during that 15, during that period of time in, um, uh, let's see, that would be uh, May of 2015, um, the EMF Safety Network that does great work about exposing frequencies in Sebastopol got a download of 65,000 documents from the uh, California Public Utility Commission and PG&E. In that 65,000 page download, there were a couple of emails. This is up on YouTube. It's called The Plan to Burn Up Northern California. PG&E, as you may, if those of you listen to me and you've typed in for yourself, you know PG&E is Rothschild. Rothschild runs the utilities across this entire country, okay? Rothschild's press releases as of November, December of 2017 and one a month ago is their plan to restructure North America. We have the authors of the economic hitman team that have destroyed governments globally, shredding United States now. Okay? And it's going to hit us in many, many different ways. So many of you say, well, 
people won't believe me about what's happening in the sky. Well, leave that one alone. Talk to people about documents then that they can look up for themselves in their own cities. But first and foremost, it's most important that everyone understand, and I talk about this as a foundation. Again, my husband and I were builders, and I have to always start with the foundation. You cannot build a house unless you put in the foundation first. The foundation is clear. We're all the enemy. We are being run by a corporate structure that has genocide plans for all of us, okay? Senate Report 93549 discusses the fact that we are the enemy. I would recommend everyone read this. Also, federalism, the abolishment of local government. I'll say a few words about local government and why voting new council members in, why voting, the illusion of voting, um, um, county supervisors or voting at all doesn't matter we're being run by grants and contracts which are increasing our national debt and requiring that the cities follow the grants that they agree to I have a grant so for those of you that would like to see it it's a FOIA request I got in 2011 where Sonoma County agreed to global warming policies Okay, for all of you that want to help out in this effort, help by getting FOIA requests from your cities on grant agreements. This is how our cities are being run. They're being run by grants. They're required to follow the uh, grant stipulations. If they do not, they must return the grant money. That money is long spent and the cities are bankrupt, so they can't return the money. That's why we're all scratching our head through elections, wondering why people we vote in make no difference, because they make no difference. So it's now time to stop with that question. It's now time to use the voting platform for getting out truth, of course. We have to use the platform that we, are, we can. If we go to city council meetings and we talk for their three minutes, understand. In their corporate construct in all the cities, school boards, health departments, it doesn't matter. They're all corporate entities. They are required by their corporate agreements to give you public comment time. That's why they will arrest you if you go over a few seconds of three minutes. That's why if your punchline is one remaining sentence, they will tell you to stop. They're not listening. I think it's pretty clear. Now I will tell you, I was duped. Before I knew how this worked, I didn't know. We went by the busload when Rosa Corey was fighting ICLEI, UN Agenda 21 in one Bay Area here. We went down to San Francisco to the ABAG meetings. We had hundreds of people talking about why we should not become a one region, why we should be consolidated into one Bay Area. It made no difference. And the next question needed to be, what was really going on? So we're in a think tank with people across the country, okay? Everyone across the country understands, not everybody. The groups that we work with understand what's happening. We've been linking together to get this information so we can get this out to all of you to understand. When you vote, when you vote, you are voting for your demise. Understand that. It's your consent. Mm -hmm. The best, best action we can take is not consenting. So let's look at what not consenting might look like. Uh, recently, as of maybe two years ago or so, uh, people that had properties in the Russian River watershed area were sent by the California um, Water Department forms. They had to list everything on their property, their holding tanks, their farm equipment, the kinds of fruit and vegetables they grew. They wanted a full inventory. They said that you had to have this turned in via computer only. You couldn't mail it. And that if you did not get it turned in by a specific date, you were going to get a $500 a day fine. $500 a day fine. Okay. Many people knew that they did not need to comply. And nothing happened. So I need to assure you their threats are idle if you don't believe that they have that power. Another example, many people in ag areas are getting letters from the USDA. They're wanting also to know 
all the, they're doing an inventory on our food supply right now in this country. They are eliminating, reducing the food supply. All right, a massive land grab on farmers right now. And the USDA sends out these questionnaires. They're like 20 pages where they want, again, the list of everything. I know people that have had USDA um, agents come on to their gated property with GPS um, equipment saying that they needed to GPS all their fruit trees and all of their garden plants. GPS and put it on Google Earth. Okay, this is a this is a food inventory of the country. So what we have right now, the United Nations that met last month has the idea of water scarcity on steroids. They're having us all believe that we're running out of water. If any and every one of you kick out to everyone you know that we have primary water. Take a look at this. Take a photograph of this. Go to this website and understand the very best news you're going to hear from me right now, and that's that we have primary water. We're not running out of water. Okay? What the EPA is saying as they tighten up water, it was just announced, there's a Senate bill and a, an Assembly bill right now being voted on to reduce water to, to 55 gallons per minute by the year 2022 and then down to 50 gallons, excuse me, not a minute, per person. Let me repeat that. Right now there's a Senate bill. By 2022, our consumption per person interior use uh, is going to be 55 gallons. By the year 2030, they're reducing it to 50 gallons. What does this really mean? A psyops in water shortage so that when they get people believing that we're really running out of water and we're showing massive con compliance to restrictive measures that aren't real, those, those restrictions are going to come down faster and tighter. We saw what happened in Africa over the past many months with zero day water. They had those poor people believing they were running out of water. What did that cause? That caused a massive, massive resource evacuation, massive resource um, refugees. People fled Africa. They were afraid they were going to die, and millions will. Millions will. Famine, famine is everywhere. Food supplies are being cut because of the weaponization of the weather. Okay? So what do we all do? We meet like this maybe more often so that we have kindred spirits, okay? So that we're not so that we're not alone, because we are not alone. We are going to be able to create a broad base if we help one another get this information out far and wide, okay? So get, help get this website out, primarywater.org. It links to another website, Primary Water Institute. I interviewed this man, a YouTube I would highly recommend everybody listen to is Primary Water Explained. I'm interviewing the um, water expert that drilled for Rothschild, the World Bank, in North Africa, and they hit primary water. This is why they blew <coughs> Libya off the map. Momar Haddafi discovered primary water when he was drilling for, for oil that is not fossil fuels, by the way. There's a very good doc, uh, book. It's called Anatomy of a Con Job. I would recommend every single one of you download that Anatomy of a Con Job. The only anatomy of a con job in that book is the poor guy doesn't know how government works. But he understands how the lie of global warming and climate change came about. And it might interest all of you to know that Ru the Russian scientists have always known that petroleum did not come from dead dinosaurs. Russians have been drilling with other countries, gaining wealth, gaining wealth. And they're able to now become the superpower because they've been accessing the very thing that we're being restricted. Our economy is being shut down, shut down. Massive, massive change and disruption. In the uh, document, I want to read this. I actually meant to start out with this. Again, there's no specific order. 
not in the world we live in. So I want to read this. A friend of mine just sent this to me. He's uh, an, Intel, an Intel whistleblower. Um, we talk regularly to people that get us Intel documents. Um, there's one on the homepage of StopTheCrime.net called the Aquarius Operations Briefing. You need to understand the danger we're in with frequencies and mind control. It's very real, it's very real, and it's escalating rapidly. So all of you here are because you can think, okay? They haven't taken over your mind yet with frequencies. So there are things you need to do. You need to wire up everything you can, hardwire everything. Use your cell phones at a minimum. When you're traveling in your car, wrap up your cell phones in enough mylar so if you call your cell phone, it does not ring. It's pulsing and picking up a signal even in airplane mode. Okay? It's totally turned off and shut down. Wrap it in mylar. Okay. Call it. They're back doors. Okay? Back doors. I did a YouTube. It's called LED lights, a silent weapon system. Understand how they are causing early onset blindness, macular degeneration, nearsightedness, and why we will be going blind. Big business for the ophthalmologist who won't tell you when you go into their offices and they've got LED lights in their offices that that's part of what's causing your blindness. Become informed. That's how you can survive. That's how we can continue to survive. I brought some roses from my garden. I would recommend everybody go out and look at your plants. They're adapting. They're surviving. We can adapt. We can adapt to many things, and we can survive as long as possible. If we understand what we need to survive from, that's the important thing. So here's what my friend sent me this morning, knowing I was going to come and talk to all of you. Silence in the face of evil is evil itself. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. So we're all here in hopes that everybody's going to carry these messages out. Assist in every way you can to contributing to the information that we're working so hard to get out. Now I want to read you something. And um, I hope I'm getting this right. Shakosh will uh, let me know. Shakosh is over there. Thank you, Shakosh, for this. Hope I'm getting it right. Listen closely. Um, Shakosh told me this, and I found this to be beautiful. Because when I looked up uh, the executive order that was approved by our CEO, uh, which is running uh, right now the uh, illusion of a president uh, seat are USA Inc. We're now uh, Earth Inc. in case you didn't know. Okay. Uh, so our CEO in chief signed into law on January 8th of 2018 the immediate and rapid deployment of broadband in rural America to reach all farms everywhere to bring them up to the new world of internet connectivity. To disband any, any laws that would prevent the deployment of these freak death rays, these frequencies. We are being genocided. There's no other way to say it. So I'm going to read you this. And thank you, Shakosh. The time of the lone wolf is over. You must gather yourselves. This was written by Uncle John. He was an Ewok elder. And these are some other quotes. You must banish or get rid of the word struggle from your vocabulary and your life. All that is to be done now in, is in sacred celebration. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so wide and swift that there will be those that are afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will be torn apart and suffer greatly. There is no shore. You are to push off into the middle of the river. Keep your eyes open, your head above water. See who is in the river with you and celebrate. You're in the river. We're all in the river. Okay? We need to, we need to celebrate what we have and we have today. 
we have to move forward in right conduct. We have to do what God wants us to do every single day, one day at a time. One day at a time. So I'm going to go over um, some other documents. Again, I would urge you to go to stopthecrime.net um, and take a look at some of these things. For those of you that have not uh, seen the NASA war plan, it is on stopthecrime.net. If you type in Deborah Tavares and the NASA war plan, which is what I call it, it actually has another name. Um, and it's called Future Strategic Issues, Future Warfare, circa 2025. And it says in this document that everything that was presented in this document as a PowerPoint by NASA two months before 9-11, all capabilities were, they had all the capabilities that were discussed. All the technology, all the nano dust, smart dust, all of the drones, everything. They already, it's already, they've told us years and years ago. So the NASA war plan is important. You can just type in Deborah Tavares, NASA war plan. I've done ad nauseum interviews on this to understand what's going on, the bigger picture. What is important to understand is we are in a profound technological disruption. Profound. The way in which we've all known is being massively disrupted quickly. All right? Gasoline is very soon not to be available in this country. They are switching us over, they, the controllers, to um, electric vehicles, okay? They're requiring all homes have solar, okay? We know alternative energies, cleaner energies are good, but they're not reliant because they control the weather, okay? So we have to ask ourselves, why are they moving us into required solar? We have to ask ourselves. When we covered the Bundy Ranch and we were coming out of Las Vegas, we pulled off the road and there's a huge mirror solar array there. And uh, we were talking about the fact that it is greatly reduced with its capability of producing the, um, the solar. And then a few, few months later they said that facility, and I think the number was uh, underperforming by about 40%, because the engineers did not calculate the overhead aerial cloud cover. Okay? Um, whoa. So let me talk to you about a few other things, and then let me talk to you about being hit with psychotronic weapons. Because we're all going to experience some level of massive increased targeting. Many of you know I've interviewed many targets. There's a few among us today. We're all targets. Okay? There's just various degrees of being targeted. But before I get into that, I want everybody to please go to the YouTube we put up. It's called Kill Cities by Rothschild and Rockefeller. Kill Cities. Please help us get this out. In that, in that you will see documents like the one I'm holding right now. What is this that I'm holding right now? I got this off of the 100 Resilient City website that was put together by Rothschild, Rockefeller, and the controllers. Don't be fooled by 100 resilient cities. This is a global assault, okay? Don't be fooled by 100. But here's the requirement. And you can go, those of you, to Santa Rosa at their planning uh, glass door in the city hall, and you will see that Santa Rosa has signed on. They are a resilient city after we were hit with directed energy weapons, resilient cities are moving in. What does that really mean? Massive onslaught of cameras and sensors. Why? To, to tightly control every function of our life, everything. The, we know that ID2020 is biometric implants, it's planned for everything. When we attended an IEEE conference a few years ago, that's up on YouTube, I think I called it IEEE, that stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, IEEE um, Technology Future Death Trap. Um, we um, heard them say back then that everything from consumption <coughs> to end of use will be tracked. Everything. Now, while many people might think that's a big deal, 
okay? Uh, and we went up to the GE CEO, or General Electric CEO that was talking about this. We uh, had a hidden camera, because we just wanted to be able to write the words down from a few questions. They have blocks where they can shield cameras, okay, just so you know. <clears throat> just so you know. So we didn't get that on film, but I'm going to tell you right now a snippet of what we were told. We told him that was a pretty diabolical discussion you just gave. Now, when he got off the stage, you would imagine that people would be swarming him to hear more. No one. He was there alone. So we walked up, and I said, that was diabolical. But why aren't you talking about the larger picture? The weather is fully controlled globally. Why aren't you telling the people the truth? The vaccinations are poisonous. The frequencies and smart meters are set to kill us. And he simply said, and Lou, I want you to repeat what he said. We're, you're right here. <laughs> he Tell said, us, Lou. <clears throat> he said, there's no stopping this. There's too much inertia behind the program. There's no stopping it. There's too much inertia. I will give you a clue. A few weeks later, his brother became the head of the VA. That's all I'll tell you who the guy was. Okay? I will tell you that when I was on the radio show with Dr. Stan Monteef, there's a document that you can download from StopTheCrime.net. It's called NWO, of course, for New World Order, um, by an insider, 1969. Download that document. Read that document. Read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Read that. It's about a 41-page document. Read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. A man even read it, and it's up on YouTube, and you can listen to him reading it to you. But turn it into a workbook. Download it. Teach your grandchildren the truth. First, start out with water. That's a good thing. Let everyone know we have water, because right now we're going to be set on massively by water. So what is this? Found this on the Resilient City website, Resilient Cities, 1000 Cities. It's a uh, Resilient uh, City pledge that all of our mayors are signing. Our mayors in all of our cities are giving, they're required under signing on to Resilient Cities to give over 10% of our YouTube yet. I'm recently learning animation and things like that. You know, I'm barely starting to learn. I can download other people's videos to put clips together. So I don't have anything out there yet, but I want to work with Jamie and everyone to try and help spread the voice. You know, I'm out of uh, East Oakland. It's a pretty dangerous area. You know, I've had multiple near-death experiences in the last year, and it, it definitely helped contribute to my awakening. Because <laughs> I sit here and I look at a lot of people going about the same problems in life and not making a single change, worrying about nonsense that they're not going to care about a couple years from now anyway. And I just decided to stop worrying about nonsense and start worrying about things that actually matter. So speaking about you, I would like to know if there's any way I can contribute to your campaign. You know, I would like to know if there's any way in Laney College in the Peralta Community College District in Oakland. And I can tell you there's a lot of things in that history class that were not told to us, that were completely suppressed, that I found out on my own through people like Jamie on a plain info and many others online. Uh, that being said, um, I can only speak on what I know. We just had an amazing meeting with activists, and among the people that showed up is Peter Crawford Valentino. Now, Peter is the independent write-in candidate for California governor, and in, on June 5th, everyone's going to get a chance to write in Peter's name on their ballots. Now, i got to ask you, what drove you to actually make the trip all the way from Los Angeles to Santa Rosa? What drove me to make the trip is, I just, I know they're going to try to burn it again, and I want to do whatever I can to create awareness. Because I feel like if there's a, an awareness that they're going to burn again, uh, and that they've used this technology, smart meters, uh, cell towers, and uh, PG&E, and all these electrical companies are in on this. Uh, if, if we get people to get rid of their smart meters, just be wise about it. If you have a smart meter, get it off your house as soon as possible, because you're a sitting duck. So what drives me is I don't want chemtrails in the sky. This, chem, this sky's full of chemtrails today. Those led to the fires. 
I want to stop the fires, I want to stop the chemtrails, my heart is bleeding for us. So we have to do it, John. We have to, we have to. We have to do whatever we can to change this world so people look up and know that's a phony sky. They have to see that the, the thing on your house can kill you and destroy your house. And just, you can opt out of these things. It just, I think the main thing that you're saying is, mm -hmm. I do not consent. I think also opting out. Opt out of GMOs, opt out of phony, phony everything, and be real. See, that's it. Peter already understood that I wanted to know about, about the other campaign planks. Yeah. You know, in the platform. Yeah. So briefly, can you go Yeah, campaign plank, plank. No, don't take any vaccinations. Don't give vaccinations to your children. They are poisonous. Uh, you have to opt out of all these things. That, that poison you. Just uh, my planks are uh, no GMOs, no uh, chemtrails, no vaccinations that, that are mandated, and then just let's raise our consciousness and work together, and then we're going to get through this. Job. And I also remember a campaign plank, no common core education, and one of the most important, U.S. out of the U.N. and U.N. out of the U.S. That's what brought me to Peter's camp in the very beginning to support him. Yes. Anything else you want to say? That's good. Get rid of the UN. <laughs> Get rid of the UN. It's uh, a Trojan horse. Take care. Yeah, we'll leave it right there. Thank so you. it's Sunday, uh, June 3rd, 2018, Redwood Cafe, Katata, California. Tremendous amount of activists meeting here. There's a brand new project that's coming out of this, which is specifically for activists. Talk soon. Okay. Thank you, guys. And we just had an amazing meeting of a tremendous amount of dedicated chemtrail activists and other uh, associated categories. Kate Magdalena Willem Hi, folks. is a lady who is a tremendously committed activist. Kate, what brought you here? Why did you decide to come here? Well, I am super excited because I have been feeling guilty for the past five years. I feel like I'm not doing enough. Yep. You know, it's one thing to do it on Facebook. It's another thing to, like, support people in the movement financially. But it's another thing to come together, and I love John's vision of what he's created in Southern California, and I'd like to see the same thing created here. I, we have Deborah Tiberas, we have Peter Valentino, we have John Knox, we have Patrick Roddy. These are immensely powerful, and of course Jamie, who brought us all together. Jamie, Jamie Lee, you know, and it's, we're we're very wealthy right now with real um, initiative and energy, and I feel like we need to capitalize on the moment and get this going for real. So I got a question for you. How do you see the future unfolding with this type of activism? It depends on each one of us. You know, it depends on, um, I mean, Jamie is a leader and Deborah is a leader in terms of getting people together, you know, and for someone like me that tends to be kind of more artistic, you know, and and, um, and, and my heart is in it, but I don't necessarily, I have like excused myself, oh, I don't have those leadership skills, but like we learned today, we each need to become those leaders and I want to train in public speaking because I feel like I absolutely can talk about You've all this stuff. You've already got public speaking now, all right? Oh, so one of the things I would suggest is getting a t-shirt that you like, yeah. you know, yeah. get, get a little message on there that you like, and then yeah. it talks all by itself. And if someone comes up to you and goes, it's just that they're not really stylish. I love to, you know, I like to look nice and stuff. I don't know about a t-shirt, but I got them to design a really you know, good t-shirt. No, you've got a then. point there. It's not stylish. <laughs> hey, we need to get Susan Marr on this and some beautiful t-shirts for yeah. women. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the other thing that we're looking at is magnetic bumper stickers. That, no, I definitely want to buy one. I mean, I want those. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and if somebody decides they want to take it, well, they've got this cool little magnetic sign. You know, the last thing I just want to say, I don't want to take up too much of time, That's is right. that we are making history here like what we are doing here is what we were born to do and I'm just so excited to be part of this movement and to have my brothers and sisters here and to be welcomed into this community so thank you so much for taking time oh, thank, you. thank you thank yeah. you really. so this is Sunday uh, June 3rd 2018 we're at the Redwood Cafe in Katati California we just had an amazing meeting with we a did. lot of heavy-duty activists we did. and there's new projects coming out of this there meeting. are so stay tuned. okay thanks all right thank you guys all right. Now, I'm with Rob Rubin. Rob is the campaign manager. He's the, the, the strategic intelligence and genius behind Peter Crawford Valentino's uh, independent uh, write-in campaign.
candidacy for California governor coming up June 5th. Now, what brought you here to Santa Rosa to talk about this? Everybody that came brought me here. It's bringing the whole group together and empowering people to go out in their communities and get this information to their community so they can support each other. And that is the beauty of what's happening today. You know, I've, I've had at least probably two or three months, and you, know, I, you and I have talked. We've been on Facebook, and we've been on texting and everything else. I never met Ron, Rob, until today. And i got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not using foolish words. Rob is a genius in terms of political campaigns, and in terms of what works for the public, for Peter to be talking about. How did you get this experience? Well, I think something that John is really good at talking about is cultivating your common sense. And this is my first campaign that I've been a part of, and it's just nothing but common sense. So if you cultivate it, I think you're going to find that when you connect to groups like this and cultivate your common sense, good things are going to happen. So participate. That's, that's a huge word, participate. Because if you don't like the outcome of what other people have done, other people have done, it's been a long day. <laughs> if you participate, you get a chance to actually, you know, make a difference. Anything else you want to say? I just want to thank this guy for traveling over a thousand miles over the last few weeks to get here. I mean, the last 900 miles was in, what, two days? Yeah. On a breakdown after that. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. this guy has been traveling the state, and he's Peter's brains in Southern California. He's been supplying Peter with all the good information, all the live streams you've seen, all the support in Southern California. That's this guy right here, John Knox. Okay. I'm John Knox. I'm with Val Hall. Now, we just finished a, an activist meeting here at the Redwood Cafe in Cotati, uh, California, not Sonoma, not uh, Santa Rosa. Not Very close, yeah. I mangled the name on a couple of uh, videos earlier. But, you know, we had an amazing meeting of some very powerful people, and I don't say these words lightly. What brought you up here, Val? Well, mostly when I saw that you were coming up here, John okay. Knox from LA Skywatch was coming up here after he just went to Tucson, Arizona, uh, to come and meet Jamie Lee up here. I just got excited and said, can I come? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was going to be an event like this. Mm -hmm. It turned into the most amazing thing. I I feel like there was a, at least 100 people here. I don't know, yeah. maybe more, 150 yeah. uh, of our close, wonderful, activist-minded kindred spirits here, mm -hmm. all on the same wavelength of coming together with all kinds of different groups, which was what we were just talking about on yeah. a conference call yeah. recently That's with right. Bye Bye Blue Sky, yeah, of exactly bringing our groups together now and consolidating all this activism into a bigger, stronger tribe. And yeah. So this thing today has been really amazing. Did you meet anybody here that you've never seen before besides myself? Well, any, I, any Facebook friends you met? Well, one, my closest person that I met here today was Kate Magdalena Willings. Okay. I've been friends with her since I became an activist, and we had never person. met. Right. Nope, never met. So what so was that like to actually meet? Just wonderful. We hugged each other for a long time, and uh, yeah. uh, just the, felt the joy, you yeah. know. Yeah. And the other thing about this is, I've always dreamed that we could have like an activist three-day camping event or something, where we all could get together in person and have fun and talk about all of these things and just be together like a family. Because in this activism, we lose members of our real family and we lose some of our greatest real friends who think we're crazy people. So it's, it's so great to be in this family where all of us have been doing this same work yeah, together. Yeah. And What I've been thinking is, is we found a new tribe. And the most important message that you can say to people that are activists and they're, they're, they've got a knowledge base that most people don't want to hear about, go find your tribe and be with him like like we have done today yes because i i never met you before nope. i've seen val's post for a long time i said she's crazy but <laughs> i like her because she's strong and she's she has a very definite view on life so yep. anything else you want to say nope i just want to say please help us stop the 5g please help us stop the geoengineering and the chemtrails let's take that air out of the balloon that's called UN Agenda 21 and flush it down the toilet Bingo. and uh, let's get back to loving and living life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. I love all of you. Thank you. I'm so glad to everybody that came here today. It's been just great.
<laughs> this is great. To see, when you're with your own tribe, things just work out better. You feel good. The vibe is nice. Now, what I want to say is there's a brand new project coming up from this meeting that was done here uh, over the weekend. And it's going to be announced very soon. And it's going to be the next step for everyone to take in terms of handling this relentless assault that we're all under 24-7-365. All right, so I'm John Knox. The road to Santa Rosa is over, and now we've got some new beginnings coming up. Cultivate your common sense. And if you're in California, vote for Peter Crawford Valentino for governor, and you have to write his name down in there. He's a write-in registered candidate. Vote. Also, vote for Kevin Modis for state senator. He's running against Diane Feinstein. we got to get her out of there. And Kevin Kevin Modus wants to protect us from the 5G harmful technology. Thank you very much. Yep. So that's June 5th when all this voting is going to happen. That's in three days. Okay? So thank you for watching and live long and prosper. No, actually, <laughs> stay curious. <laughs> Gentlemen, with you. Shakosh. This is Shakosh. She is a local activist, and she's definitely against having anything having to do with 5G anywhere near her or anybody who is a human being. I want them out of my air and out of my property. I'd like to have them get off the planet. So, yeah, I'm serious. Thank you. So, hi, I'm Patrick. Hi, Hi, everyone. Um, we've already won. I know it sounds kind of like, well, look how they crap in the sky and they don't have all these crappy plants and stuff. But we have. This is everyone. We talk, I mean, of course, we're talking to people already know. But if you talk to people who have no clue at all, compare those experiences from one year ago, five years ago, whatever. Everyone is figuring it out. And what they're figuring out is that there is a thing, well, I just call it awesomeness or puppies and ice cream, which is like the better thing. You, like if, it's, if you have a choice between two things, you go with the better one. Or if it's perfect, perfect. And perfect is a thing. Perfect happens. We have, look into the Fibonacci sequence. Each thing you do, the, the, the growth you make is based on the previous two things that you've done. And, it, and the bits before are the bit that pushes it along. Um, we look at this, we, and each subsequent number is the sum of the previous two. So it goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. And, when you, and if you look at a fern unfurling, that growth out like that is how things grow. That's how God designed them. It's it's it sacred geometry. Yeah, exactly. So we look at this and it's like, wow, they've got a head start on me. <laughs> but this started as a bad idea. One of us can do a good thing. Anything at all. You know, you can let someone ahead of you in the you know, for the checkout. And at any small thing, someone's trying to, you know, be nice to someone on a freeway, any freaking thing. And when you do that, first of all, there is more good in the world, and therefore everything becomes more awesome. But when you let that grow, and Fibonacci eventually it will overcome this, and we've already done it. We're here. And we need to understand, uh, as I call it, spiritual plumbing. Because the, we understand the physical stuff we have a fair idea about, and how waves and all that kind of stuff work, and gravity and matter, and all that kind of stuff. But you need to be able to, we already can in our guts recognize anything that's not okay. By, uh, like our side has, <clears throat> well the puppies and ice cream, we have beauty, perfection, truth, relief, happiness, joy, forgiveness, healing, empathy. creation, empathy, love. All of these things are the same kind of offshoots of this, that source we all come from. The further away from it, they lack those things and they do exactly the same as we do, but with opposite intent. If you want to understand your if you want to understand your opposite number, understand yourself and flip the intent. That's all there is to it. It's very, very easy. And of course they're gonna keep doing it, but all we have to do is be awesome. That's it. Be awesome. 
And the, I love, you know, uh, where, where are you? Uh, you know, you're not looking outside. No, you're not looking outside yourself for the leader, because we are the leader. You know, and people are afraid. Oh, I can't. I can't call myself Neo, the one who does all this stuff. But I'm starting to see the world in spiritual terms, almost in a, a, a in the movie the way they. At the end, you could see what the numbers represented. I see the characteristics of suckiness and steer away from them. And, and, and if you need to strengthen yourself, you can push up against it to, to build your own. Um, it's there, but I consider myself the one. But so are you, so are you, so are you, so are you, so are you. Everybody here is the one. We grow out. And people say, oh, you know stuff and whatever you've been... I've just been doing it a bit longer. That's, that's the only freaking difference. You know? And once you start, you just carry on. And, you, and, and, it, and it becomes easier because the work that you do in this growth, um, each amount of work also grows in Fibonacci. Each one that you do is the sum of the previous two. It's not twice as much. You can handle it. You'll, it's almost the edge of your ability but it then that means you grow again by Fibonacci and you you get used to almost amazement now you just drove up here today from Huntington Beach. This one was crazy. But <laughs> it was fun. Marcia, you're a committed activist. What brought you up? Yeah, because I was like to be around like-minded people, okay. and there's not lots of us around, and this is a nice gathering of people that are on the same page. Okay. And it's right. good to touch bases and exchange thoughts and listen to people that are experts, and you know, listen to people like you and you and everybody else. Okay. So to enter to network. What's maybe one or two thoughts that you, you heard today that you really like? Uh, getting something, another level of stuff uh, okay. underway. Now, you have to understand, Marcia's been, she started driving at 5 o'clock this morning. No, from, by 3.30. Oh, 3.30 this morning. So, you know, the thoughts are not going to come right, really right, quick right, off. Right, right, right. But the great thing is, Marcia first came to a Los Angeles Skywatch meeting, and that's where you and I met. Right. And Alana Freeland, actually, I met you there for that's a right, that's right. Right. So I've mean, listened to her for so long. When you see an activist who's truly committed, you pick up on their energy right away, and that's what I picked up on you as soon as I saw you. And I'm so glad that you made this. I didn't, I didn't think you were going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought that my son would be working in a toxic industry in a classroom that's full of radiation because it's all the wireless in there, and then. Uh, Oh, they're going to amp that up with mm -hmm. Measure Q, from yep. what I understand. Yep. And then um, add to it, every kid's got their cell phone on in there. I'm going, oh my gosh. So anyway, and he won't listen to me. I had uh, Oral Miller come and check. Yes, oh, remember. My son remember. About it. All right, so. I've learned so much from everybody here, and you, and I'm so glad I up yeah, me too, me too, believe me. And I could use 100 more Marsha Hoist right now. Is that Julie too? And, and, uh, Julie, Julie Moresky. Paris? Yep, and Paris. Yeah. Yeah.